And the first thing I want to do is I want to get my bottom thread up. Um, I used the, the automatic cutting feature last time, so I want to get my bottom thread up because I want to hold both threads, and I'll explain to you why I'm doing that in a few seconds. <clears throat> I have this set to so slow, I uh, probably will pick up the speed in a little bit here. It looks like going the right direction, doesn't it? That's what those arrows are for. Okay, if I hold my threads, then I won't have that um, traditional loop that you find on the bottom of your project, whether you're quilting, garment work, or whatever because um, your first stitch has no tension on it, and so I want to be able to hold those. Another thing I want to explain, this particular package of binding was a little bit off to begin with, and so you'll see a little bit of rippling in there, which means when they cut this in the factory, it wasn't perfectly on the um, bias, and I've run into that with this color for some reason, and I don't know why, but it, we're, we should still be fine, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so I like to start right at one of my corners. And so I'm gonna get my, my presser foot down and I sew about a 16th of an inch um, inside that fold. And I like to do a little bit of a securing stitch. And I'm gonna speed her up a little bit. I do not pin, I do not clip. And the reason I don't pin or clip is because the fusible thread's holding this in place for me. So I really like that. And the walking foot. And the walking foot. Yes, thank you for reminding me of that. So why am I using a walking foot? A walking foot has three moving parts it has, uh, that engage with your feed dogs. Your feed dogs have three sections, a left section, a middle section, three sections a left section, a middle section, and the far right section. This is a, a machine that has built-in dual feed. Built-in dual feed is wonderful for piecing, and the upper feed engages with the middle feed dog. But anytime you're actually working with a sandwich of fabric, like in quilting, where you have your quilt top, a layer of batting, and a backing, and binding especially, you want engagement with all of your feed dogs, the, the whole feed dog uh, section, so the left, the right, and the middle. So I always use a walking foot when I'm doing my name. If you don't have a walking foot, I, I recommend finding one. You can even buy them for antique sewing machines. So I'm stopping with the needle in a down position. It's an automatic setting on this particular machine. Many machines have that feature, but if not, just rotate your handle towards you so your needle is in the down position. Presser foot, pivot, lower presser foot. Now, Berninas have a freehand system. If I had that in here, I could just use my right knee to gently raise my presser foot for pivoting purposes, but I don't have the machine set up that way today. And you do have to sew with your left foot when you use that. For those of you that are Bernina owners, there actually is an edge foot attachment for your walking foot. And um, you could use that and then you know you have a perfectly parallel top stitch seam on your binding. approach that inside corner, needle down, and one of the things I'm looking for that you cannot see is I'm making sure I'm going through all layers of my binding before I pivot.
Just press your foot, pivot. I want to press your foot. Okay, so. Press your pivot, pivot. Now I'm on my last leg. I really do suggest that when you start a new technique, um, that you start with a small project. You tend to enjoy what you're doing if you're successful in small bites. So start with something small and then move on to bigger projects. And as I approach the end here, I'm gonna stop right at that fold and I'm gonna do just a tiny securing stitch and then I'm going to raise my needle and I'm going to raise my presser foot and I'm going to pull my threads out and I'll either cut them super close or bury them in, into the quilt. But here's a good close up for you. You can see the binding in the back. Now, one of the um, misunderstandings about attaching binding by machine is I've, I've had many uh, students and many customers say, oh, I can't attach my binding my machine. I can never get it right. And what they're trying to do is stitch from the top and stitch in the ditch at the same time. Don't even try that. that you'll never, ever have a straight binding. The whole point of this is you're going to be smaller here and you're going to be folding over and have a wider binding here. Now, if you have a quilt top that you've put together, and you don't have a border, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't have a border around the quilt and you're concerned about those quarter inch seams. When you trim your, um, your batting and your backing, leave an extra quarter inch beyond the perimeter of the quilt. And then when you fold this over its full length, which is a half inch, you're gonna be a half inch onto the seam of your quilt top. And so you won't mess with the points if you have uh, triangle blocks or anything like that and you'll have a nice beefy binding most people that are really concerned about that sort of precision sewing will actually sew the binding to the front and then they'll hand stitch it to the back I sew from the back and uh, then I sew onto the front top stitching because handwork is, is very hard for me to do so anyhow I hope that this was enjoyable for you and I want to conclude by saying, absolutely, use your overlocker to attach a binding. It's perfect every time.